Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Justice Ministry names Acting Director of Public Prosecutions to replace Paula Llewellyn. Spanish Town St. Catherine remains tense following days of unrest. And later in sports, playoffs for the Rea Nevia Jamaica Premier League kick off at Sabana Park today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pula and here are the details. Claudette Thompson, Senior Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, is now the Acting Director of Public Prosecutions. The announcement was made in a press release issued by the Ministry of Justice a short while ago. Governor General Sir Patrick Allen approved Ms. Thompson's appointment to act as Director of Public Prosecutions effective April 2022-2024, based on the recommendation of the Public Service Commission. Based on her background, the release further stated that Ms. Thompson brings a wealth of experience to the office. While the Jamaica Bar Association, Jambar, has weighed in on the status of the Director of Public Prosecutions, last week the Constitutional Court ruled that the second extension of Paula Llewellyn's tenure as DPP was unconstitutional. Ms. Llewellyn has decided that starting Monday she will stay away from the office in which she has served as DPP since 2008. The Jambar Chair has commented on the matter. Yes, that was filed. One could say, yes, there might have, it might have taken a certain direction, but we usually don't predict what a court may decide. And um, having regard to the judgment and having read the judgment quite thoroughly, it does seem to us that the direction that was taken some time ago by these claimants is, is one that um, is correct. Speaking on Small Jamaica this morning, she also says the Constitution outlines provisions on how an acting DPP may be appointed on two basic reasons. The office of the DPP is vacant and second, that the holder of the office is unable to carry out to their functions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will see from the Attorney General's statement mm -hmm. that it is the second one that I mentioned that it's premised on. Jambar's position is that the office is vacant and that is the basis upon which an, an acting DPP First, can be appointed. The second. Okay. the second one presumes mm -hmm. that Ms. Lowell in King's Council continues as the holder of the office and that's inconsistent with the judgment. Yeah. Spanish towns in St. Catherine remain tense this afternoon following a flare-up of violence in recent days. Gang members have been causing mayhem, including staging roadblocks, after two days after two of their members were fatal, fatally shot by the police. At news time, the police high command was locked in a meeting discussing the situation. There are plans to tour the affected areas today. Meanwhile, Mayor of Spanish Town, Norman Scott, says more intervention by the lawmen is critical at this time. He was speaking on Power 106 Morning Agenda Monday. Call on the relevant um, agencies to do a thorough investigation into the um, alleged um, shootout and the incident. And uh, to ask the various agencies of the state to be deployed into these communities um, so that we can have the meetings of the various community groups to try and bring some kind of calm he says Spanish Town needs to go back to the once peaceful place it was prior to the incident. In the parish, in the town, we have had relative peace and calm over the past almost, well, I, I've been here for t t 10, 12 years, and we have had relative peace and calm over that um, period. Um, I was away, reaching into the town. I was called to say that there are disturbances. 
Commanding Officer for St. James, Senior Superintendent of Police Iran Samuel says, as part of efforts to curtail crime in the parish, there will be an increase in the use of technology. While addressing the business community at the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce last week, he announced that plans are being put in place for technology to assist in crime fighting and the monitoring of team members. We want to ensure that we increase the amount of technology that we use to aid crime fighting and to um, aid in the customer service procedures that we have. Um, we are in the process of building out our monitoring room that will see us having access to the Jamaica Eye uh, monitoring our, and tracking our vehicles so that we can improve the response times to incidents and to also ensure that the police officers are where we um, mandate that they should be. He added, he added that as part of that process, he wants to ensure that St. James has the cutting-edge technology being used. Most times you have Kingston and the other divisions being given that focus, but we want to ensure that we start here. In the meantime, President of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce, Oral Heaven, says the business community stands ready to assist the police. It is evident that St. James faces unique challenges. It's not, a, it's not like a regular parish and require strategic and collaborative effort to address these challenges effectively. Mixed reactions this afternoon among transport operators in Westmoreland over the relocation of the Savlamar Transportation Center. The Westmoreland Municipal Corporation says the move was necessary as the owners of the property of the current location have expressed desires to retake control of the land. Amoy Harriet reports. The Savannah Lamar Transport Center is currently located at Barracks Road. But come next week, it will be moved to 65 Beckford Street, its original location. It was relocated about 20 years ago. But according to Mayor of Savannah Lamar, Dan Reed Delancey, the center now has to go back to its original address. What has happened is that the current location and property is not ours. We were on a lease agreement for quite some time. And the owners of said property no want no wanted for their personal use. Mayor Delancey says he's not worried about the move, but some transport operators are of a different view. The difference between this venue and the other venue, this is a more larger venue than 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 we than what we are to. And not only that, I guess several have more traffic, more constant up to yourself. That's one fact. Because to be honest, you know, so analyze one analyze one time. Yeah, right now this is a bus park now, you have a lot of coastal in the bus park. So, so sometimes inside you jump up. So many real low runs how to really work out. But according to Mayor Delancey, it will work. Not all of the vehicles will be in the park at the same time. So in terms of park being able to accommodate all the vehicles, um, you should be able to do so. Amoy Harriet, TVJ. Commission of Police Dr. Kevin Blake is this afternoon urging motorists who traverse the nation's roadways to exercise caution. It comes following a third consecutive week of double-digit road fatalities. Ten people were killed up to Friday, April 19. Dr. Blake says he's concerned about the rising number of road fatalities. The increasing number of road fatalities that we've seen in the recent um, weeks is worrying and we ask that we utilize the road more effectively, more responsibly. And it, a life is not worth the bad and poor decisions that we make on the road. So I take the opportunity to appeal to us, let us save life, let us not, it's not just the life of the driver but the other persons that you have here whose lives you're put in danger. The Jamaica Labour Party is urging Jamaicans to stand with the government as it resolves governance issues facing the country. Deputy Chairman Andre Franklin told TVJ News that there are people in the workings of 
government who want to go into campaign mode and this may affect how they do their jobs. Stand with the government as it relates to, to government issues. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are some people who would want to drift off into the campaign mode, those within the workings of government, and I would just simply say to them, Regardless which party you support, put the government of Jamaica first, get your job done, and then when it's time for election, we all choose whosoever we wish. Mr. Franklin says the GLP is moving to improve its communication and internal issues as it prepares for the general election constitutionally due in 2025. Communication element that needs to be tightened up. There, There is uh, some interaction, some interpersonal, intrapersonal uh, activities that as a party we need to, to tighten up over the next couple of weeks going into uh, next early months because uh, we anticipate to be victorious and the necessary changes as they arise by scientific means, by means of pollings, etc., etc., focus group, we'll make the necessary changes. But It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says, despite improvements in the country's healthcare system, more needs to be done. Dr. Tufton says plans are now in the pipeline to meet with the various councils in the health field to find ways to improve the sector. Jamaica's healthcare system continues to face numerous challenges. These challenges have led to reduced quality of care, especially for those with chronic conditions. But Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says, despite these challenges, the sector has seen some improvements. But he does agree more needs to be done. Additional healthcare personnel, more robust infrastructure, and an updated information system as other improvements that are needed. We are digitizing, which means networking, which allows greater participation of technology through telemedicine, not just within country, but cross borders. What does that mean for the specialists who may reside in London, but are consulting with a patient in Kingston or Westmoreland, as the case may be? I mean, I don't have the answers, but I know that they represent these changes, a new paradigm in how we administer healthcare to our population. But he says a meeting should take place soon with the various medical groups to look at the issues and decide on the way forward. Dr. Tufton was addressing a group of medical doctors at a Medical Council of Jamaica function in St. Andrew recently. The function was to honor former registrar of the council, Professor Howard Spencer, who spent years helping to evolve the medical field and is now retiring. Professor Spencer has brought healing to thousands of patients as a diligent, brilliant surgeon. As a teacher, he has delivered sound knowledge to thousands of students and to the faculty insights and inquiry over 44 through 44 papers and 40 articles. Today, we honor Professor Howard Washington Spencer. We take a break. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. It's now time for the Business Minute. There is a decline in the number of households that receive remittances over the last eight years. The latest Consumer Confidence Survey shows that only 27% of households say they were getting money from overseas. Executive Chairman of Market Research Services Limited, Don Anderson, says this decline could have a negative effect on purchasing power of many Jamaicans. The latest Consumer Confidence Survey covers the period January to March 2024. 630 people were interviewed. Further afield, Hyundai Motor Company is the latest major brand to pause its advertising on X, formerly known as Twitter. Hyundai's announcement come after an ad from the automaker reportedly appeared next to anti-Semitic and pro-Hitler post. In response, Hyundai paused their ads. 
A spokesperson said the company is speaking with X directly about brand safety to ensure this issue is addressed. The head of business operations at X said the company's ad agency did not activate brand safety settings and that the campaign took place without X's direct sales team. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Karen Simpson. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, Barbados has announced its decision to officially recognize Palestine as a state, becoming the 11th CARICOM member to do so. The island's foreign minister says the move does not affect its relationship with Israel. The announcement comes amid talks for a two-state solution in the Hamas-Israel war. The question of Palestinian statehood has been disputed for decades, with the U.S., France and the U.K. among the countries that do not recognize it as a state. On the international scene, Israeli military's intelligence chief, Major General Haron Haliva, has resigned. Haliva stepped down, saying he takes responsibility for Hamas's attack on Israel on October 7 of last year. He's the first senior figure to step down over the attack. And nearly 60,000 people have been evacuated from their homes in Guangdong, China, following days of massive flooding. Three people have died, while 11 have gone missing. Flights have been cancelled at the local airport as authorities warn that the situation could worsen later. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Amoy Harriet. Thank you, Amoy. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports support with Giovanni Dennis.